When a doctor listens to your heartbeat, what is the doctor really listening to? When you have your blood pressure taken, what does a reading of 120 over 80 actually mean? And you've probably seen people hooked up to ECG machines. What is the graph actually displaying? Well, these are all questions that we're going to answer as we explore the path of blood through the human body. Now, to start off, it's important to know a little bit more about the vessels leading into and out of the heart. Remember that in the heart, we have the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left ventricle, and the left atrium. The vessels that lead into the right atrium are known as the vena cava. Uh, this is the largest vein in the body. The one coming from below the body is called the inferior vena cava, and the one coming from above the heart is the superior vena cava. Both will empty blood into the right atrium. Blood will leave the right ventricle through the pulmonary artery. Uh, pulmonary has to do with lungs. Blood will enter into the left atrium through the pulmonary vein. And finally, blood will leave the left ventricle through the aorta, the largest artery in the body. So here you can see that veins are bringing blood back into the atria, and arteries are taking blood out of the ventricles and off to the rest of the body. So to understand the path of blood, it's kind of like the New Haven bus system. In New Haven, there are different buses, and each bus travels a different loop. Well, it's the same thing with the human circulatory system. There are two main circuits or loops that blood travels in your body. The first loop is known as the systemic circuit. And in this loop, blood is moving between the heart and the body. The second loop is known as the pulmonary circuit. And in this loop, blood is moving between the heart and the lungs. And the colors in this diagram give us a clue as to what's happening. In the systemic circuit, blood leaves the heart, and it's bright red, it's fully oxygenated, and it travels to all the parts of the body. It drops off the oxygen to those body cells. So the blood that comes back to the heart is now deoxygenated. It has no oxygen. Well, it needs to get some more. So it heads off into the lungs, where it gets lots of oxygen, and then the blood is now oxygenated, so it heads back to the heart. And then the cycle continues. So it's kind of like a figure eight. The blood will travel the pulmonary and the systemic circuit in order to keep you alive. Now let's look at these two loops in a little bit more detail. So we're going to start with the pulmonary circuit. Really, we could start anywhere because it's a loop, but we're going to start there. So we're going to start in the right ventricle with deoxygenated blood. The blood is then pumped into the pulmonary artery, which carries the blood to the capillaries that surround the lungs. Note the color change here. Once the blood gets to the capillaries around the lungs, the blood is going to pick up oxygen and drop off carbon dioxide. The oxygenated blood is now going to head back to the heart via the pulmonary vein. This is interesting. This is the only vein in your body that will be carrying oxygenated blood and it'll carry that blood back into the left atrium. From there, the blood moves into the left ventricle. Now, the left ventricle is very powerful, and it will pump the blood into the systemic circuit. So the aorta is the first step in the systemic circuit, and this large artery will branch off into smaller arteries and then arterioles, and eventually capillaries surrounding all your body organs. Here again, the color change tells us that the blood in the capillaries is dropping off oxygen for your cells and picking up carbon dioxide. Of course, it's also exchanging other materials as well. Now that deoxygenated blood is going to travel back through venules and finally veins and the biggest vein in the body, the vena cava. The vena cava will empty the blood back into the right atrium and then the loop begins again. So in case you didn't get all that down in your notes, here's the summary, the main steps. Right ventricle into the pulmonary artery. Pulmonary artery to the lungs. Exchange of materials at the lungs in the capillaries. The pulmonary vein carries it back to the left atrium. 
Oxygenated blood now enters the left ventricle. Left ventricle pumps it out into the aorta. Aorta branches off into arteries and arterioles, and finally capillaries. Materials are exchanged. Veins carry the blood back to the heart. The vena cava, the biggest vein, empties it into the right atrium, and we're back where we started. So what does this have to do with blood pressure? Well, blood pressure is simply uh, the force of blood as it pushes against the walls of the artery. And the blood pressure is highest in arteries because those are the vessels that are receiving blood directly pumped from the heart. Now, there's two components to your blood pressure, though. 120 and 80 is the healthy version. What do those numbers mean? Well, to understand that, let's look at what happens when the heart beats. During the heart's cycle of beating, or cardiac cycle, there's a few steps. During the first step, the heart is relaxed, and so blood flows into both the atria and the ventricles. And if you notice, you'll see that the valves here are open to allow blood to fill it up. This part of the cardiac cycle is known as the diastole, and this takes a little less than half a second. But then, what happens is the atria contract. So here you can see that they are squeezing blood into the ventricles. Once that happens, the ventricles contract. And here you can see the ventricles are squeezing blood into the arteries. Something else interesting happens here. These valves slam shut. That's to prevent the blood from going back into the atria. We want the blood to go into the arteries. Now, these two steps are known as the systole. So the heart contracting or squeezing is systole, and the heart relaxing is diastole. And that's where we get the two numbers. The bigger number, which is on top, is the systolic pressure. That pressure is highest because that's when the heart is pushing blood against your arteries. The diastolic pressure is the smaller number on the bottom. That number is smaller because that's when the heart is relaxing, so there's not as much pressure on your arteries. Now you might be wondering, what makes the heart contract in the first place? Well, up in the corner of the right atrium, there are some special cells known as a pacemaker. And the pacemaker uh, is very unique in that it can make its own electrical signals. And when you look at an ECG reading, uh, the first part of the ECG reading represents the signals starting to spread. This part of the ECG represents the signal spreading through both of the atria. Then there's a little bit of a delay as the signals spread to the bottom of the heart. And then the spike in the ECG is when the signal spreads through all of the ventricles. So the small hump is the atria, the big spike is the ventricles, and then the heart returns to normal. And let's end, here's an animation showing the pacemaker generating signals in the atria. There's the loop. And then the signals spreading into the ventricle. And then we have a recovery period. And it begins again.